All right, so this is episode 35 of Ask EJ. Let's uh, let's do it. I got three questions, so let's have it, hippie. All right, first one comes from Mike out of Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Yep. You know that I went to Hattiesburg High School when oh. I was in the 11th grade. No way. I did. I was a Hattiesburg Tiger. Played baseball for them. Yeah, enjoyed it. It was a good nice. time. Nice. Go Tigers. Loved it. Yeah? Loved it. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> cool. Uh, so Mike asks, uh, I'm an LEO uh, as well as a firearms instructor for pistol, rifle, and shotgun. I'm currently running a Trigicon RMR on my M&P Core 4.25 inch 9 millimeter. Mm -hmm. It's a bit large for EDC, but it's my inside the waistband and EDC handgun. Since using the RMR, I've noticed I'm becoming a better shooter because the movement in the dot helps me focus on all my shooting fundamentals and errors. Are there any live fire training tips you could give for training with an RMR that would be different for someone training with iron sights? Hmm. <clears throat> well, your RMR, uh, once you become comfortable with, with shooting with an RMR, actually uh, allows you to get on target, I think, a lot faster. Uh, but you have to trust it. So when the gun is coming up, uh, and this is like a no soup, no stress. We're not running a CQB environment here. We're not, you know, kicking doors and stuff. Uh, but in a training environment, when the gun is coming up, the gun, in most cases, I know there's some internet ninjas out there that will disagree, uh, but in most cases, the shooter brings the gun up, and the gun uh, stops its movement, and then they may or may not align the rear sight perfectly with the front, but uh, they can see that the rear sight is in, uh, you know, in play with the front sight, so I'm, I'm good. And then they line that front sight up and then they take the shot. Now that may happen in a millisecond, it may happen in five seconds, depending on the, uh, you know, how good that shooter is or how much experience that, that person has. So here's what I'll tell you. Uh, as the gun is coming up on the target, when the dot is on the target where you want, go ahead and pull the trigger and see what happens. So you've got your paper target right, you're bringing the gun up, boom. So coming out of the holster, making, that, uh, making the hands come together and pressing out, when you see that red dot on the target, doesn't have to be all the way out doing the Jack Sparrow. See it on target, boom, pull the trigger. And then pull the trigger and then continue to press out with that shot. And then, you know, you do your scan or, you know, engage your additional targets. The point of that is saying, just like with a red dot on a rifle, you don't have to be in that perfect position uh, to make the shot. A lot like what you do, you have to do with your, your irons. Okay. With the red dot, get it on and pull the trigger and uh, you'll find out that you're not in like that ideal, uh, you know, <sighs> lining up shot, taking it uh, stance. That's what's going to feel a little uncomfortable. That's where we get into trusting the red dot. So I would tell you do that in a static environment uh, where you can focus on you and the gun doing this you know, Vulcan mind meld of, of some sort and and working on trusting the red dot. When the red dot is there, be ready to you know pull the trigger. Boom. That your sights are properly aligned with the red dot. But we're so used to you know the notch and post and lining those up perfectly um, you know in a non-stressful environment that it feels like we're jumping the shot. But we're not. So that's what I would say. You know, give yourself an opportunity to uh, to make the red dot prove itself um, unworthy. Get in there and run it. Give it an opportunity to prove itself in a good situation and a bad situation as far as your stance and form is concerned. Um, it will prove itself. You know, uh, you just got to trust it. You know, that's saying that you dialed it in right and everything.
just like when you're in an unorthodox, I use air finger quotes there, unorthodox shooting position with a red dot on a rifle. Um, wherever the red dot is is where the bullet will go. If you've done your part and sighting it in, same thing for the with your RMR uh, on your pistol. It just takes some conditioning to trust it, that's all. But then once you you do trust it, you'll find that you're on a lot faster. I mean, you look at at what the um, you know what your competitive shooters use. You know they're using red dots, but what they're doing is is they're trusting that red dot. As soon as that red dot is on that target, they're going ahead and pull the trigger. We need we need a little bit more time to confirm that that red dot is on there, and it feels like eternity. Uh, uh, to a competitive shooter if they have to confirm. I'm not saying you need to be a competitive shooter. Just understand what I'm saying is they trust the red dot, you trust yours, things will happen. But it's going to take some time. It's going to take some time. But that's good that you're using it, uh, and that's good that you're you're wanting to know more about it because, uh, man, once you do trust that thing, it's like how could you ever not have a red dot on a rifle on, an, on, you know, on your AR again? You know, it just makes it that much more advantageous to you using it in a you know defensive situation um, bring the gun up and as soon as the red dot's there go ahead and be ready to pull that trigger without you having to be in that that what you feel comfortable position which is comfortable is usually you know where you can confirm that your sights are properly lined the red dots on it you're going to hit it all right you know, as long as you don't jerk the trigger and all that other garbage, you know. You do your part right, you'll be fine. Next question comes from Adam in Vermont. Mm -hmm. I bought a spare AR bolt carrier group for spare parts drop and replacement. In doing some research online, I've seen varying opinions on checking the headspace before using it. Hold up. Varying opinions online? Never. That's preposterous. Never. I doubt it. <laughs> So, uh, very opinions on checking the headspace before using it. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's worthwhile to check first or just drop it in and run it? Love the show, especially when you bust my balls. <laughs> Getting on the hippie. <laughs> okay. Well, is Adam, is that right? Yeah. All right, Adam. Well, there's two schools of thought here. Uh, you could just drop it in just like everybody else does and then wonder why it doesn't work when it doesn't work and be happy when it works because it worked. You know, I mean, it's kind of a, anything that says mil spec, you know, you're kind of just rolling the dice there. But more than likely, I would imagine that it would work, um, you know. But you can go on one of them there, uh, you know, websites of the, you know, Midway Brown L's or whatever like that and get you a, you know, a headspace gauge, a little go, no go gauge if you want to. Um, but, you know, what are you going to do if it doesn't gauge outright? Send it back, right? That's about it. So, it's not like you're really going to do a whole lot of fixing. So, I would say, uh, you know, on a mil spec part, like a, like a, a bolt, uh, you'll be fine. You should be fine. Hell, I've done it. I don't know. Half a dozen times. Never been a problem for me. But that's only my experience, and it's extremely limited. <laughs> it is very limited. When you start to read the comments, it's very limited. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, if you want to get a, you know, you want to get a headspace gauge for your AR, that's not a bad thing to have and put it in your little kit. But, uh, you know, it's an AR, man. The thing is, is that when you start buying parts that are like mil spec, there's my air finger quotes again, <laughs> mil spec, right? Um, you know, there's certain tolerances that they're allowed to, to work within. It's just when you start getting the, the, uh, the tolerances out of spec over here, but still acceptable, and this tolerance out of spec, but it's still, you know, tolerable, that this little hair and this little hair, when they combine, make a big problem. 
and you just don't know when that's going to be unless you're going to carry around a micrometer and you know start gauging but i mean yeah i, I don't have i carry around a, um you know a headspace gauge you know it's kind of one of those i'll read the map when i really get lost <laughs> <laughs> uh things yeah if all else fails pull out the headspace gauge and make sure and then, if it is a headspace, you wish you had done that at the very beginning. <laughs> but now you know. So, I mean, I honestly don't think you'll have too big of a problem with it. Especially if you're buying it from a, you know, a reputable source. But if you're, if you're getting, getting it from like Bob's Hair Care and Bolt, <laughs> Bolt Center, you know, I don't know. That's the end of my answer, man. What's okay. going on? Cool. Looking at me like I got a horn going on. Sorry. Uh, number three comes from Dave out of Springfield, Missouri. Missouri. Now, you know the last time I said Missouri, right? And then one of the guys in the comments was like, no, I say it in Missouri. Well, apparently there's like a, a Mason-Dixon line in Missouri. <laughs> and they say it one way. And then it's said another way. And then they hate each other for saying it that way because they fight online about how it's pronounced. Yeah. So we're just going to say it Missouri because that's how I say it. That's how you say that's it, right? Awesome. Yep. We actually have something in common. There we go. What do you know? <laughs> California Common Core versus the Mississippi <laughs> Education. It's a battle. <laughs> Losing on both ends. It's it. <laughs> damned if you do, damned if you don't. Yep. <laughs> All right, let's have it. All right, so... Dave says, I've trained with several instructors with varied backgrounds. There seems to be two schools of thought in dealing with multiple attackers. Okay. Multiple a law enforcement attackers. instructor taught us to get multiple shots on the first attacker before engaging a second one. His reasoning was criminals are mostly cowards, so the additional attackers are likely to flee when you're dealing with the first attacker. And in most cases, it takes multiple hits with a handgun to stop an attacker. A military background instructor taught us uh, to get a hit on each attacker before giving additional hits to any. His reasoning was while you're getting multiple hits on the first guy, the other guy will be given too much opportunity to shoot you, so it's better to get a hit on all and then see which ones are still in the fight. What's your philosophy on this and why? Mm. Well, that's a good question. All right. Uh First of all, to choose one over the other is to say that the other is wrong. Okay, they both could be applicable given, you know, the context of how it's applied. If you go back and read what he said uh, that the LEO instructor said, re read that, and I'll point out some some keywords here. Okay, so a law enforcement instructor taught us to get multiple shots on the first attacker before engaging the second one. His reasoning was criminals are mostly cowards, so the additional attackers are likely to flee while you're dealing with the first attacker, and in most cases it takes multiple hits with a handgun to stop an attacker. Most, mostly, and likely. Those are all variables. If you happen to be engaging the guy that's not part of the mostly, He's part of the unmostly, which is not a real world, I just made it up, but he's part of the unmostly, does that work out for you? What if he's part of the uh, unlikely of the likely? And what if he's not a coward? What if he's determined? So you have these variables that for, for you to make just a broad stroke answer tends to be a little difficult. Uh, You know, depending on, let's just say there's a <clears throat> there's a crazed maniac and he's right here in front of you and he's lunging towards you. And there's a couple of guys that are 25 yards away, but they're coming towards you. I could make the case in this made up scenario that I would need to get this guy down, whatever it took, right? Because of the distance and the threat that they pose is not nearly as great as this impending doom that I have right here in front of me. Uh, I'm not going to disagree 
that the officer has encountered a lot of cowardly criminals in his day? Because that's pretty much what most criminals are, a bunch of cowards. Uh, I will say in the military, though, they don't train us to fight cowards. They train us to fight a determined enemy. So I could see where the military background would say, you know, put a bullet in each one of those dudes and then come back and clean up any dude that did not lose his uh, enthusiasm to fight with the first bullet. So I don't disagree with either one. Uh, you know, there's that general approach that says, you know, you shoot until the threat is no longer a threat. But, uh, but you've got all these other drills that are like, like the El Presidente and the Mozambique and all these other drills that you should be prepared to do both uh, based on however that fight is brought to you. Um, you know, and ultimately, you have to decide. So I would say be prepared to put, you know, a round in each one and then be prepared to shoot that crazy fool who's all jacked up on Mountain Dew um, running headlong at you with, you know, a machete, machete. Uh, until he's not a threat anymore. So you typically need to deal with the closest lethal threat first. But then again, I mean, that's where we, you know, when I wrote that article, The Science of Gunfighting, and I put it in counterviolence, there are a lot of factors that you have that are in play. You know, the threat vector, that line of approach, direct line of approach from the bad guy to you. Uh, space in which you have to work in, time uh, that you have. Did you recognize it before the threat was a threat? Did you recognize it after the threat had been revealed? Did you recognize it in the advance uh, towards you that there's a threat? Is he closing the distance on you? Um, and then the force applied. So force being, you know, is it a gun? Well, 25 yards away with well, a gun's pretty lethal. Uh, 25 yards away with a baseball bat, I got a little bit of time on my hands. Not a whole lot, but I got a little bit more than he does with that I do with some dude over there with a with a gun. So, like my my philosophy is deal with what's going to kill you right then and there first. That's my priority. And it's contextual, man. And it's situational, really. So be prepared to do whatever it takes. So train on it all. You know, uh, you, know you gotta look too. What's your round count? You know, if it takes five shots to get dude down, and then he's got three other buddies, and you've only got a Six shot gun, six shot pistol, you know, then that math is not going to work out for you. I don't, I don't know, man. I mean, you could sit here and war game it to death. I don't disagree with either approach, but I will say that they both are applicable in certain situations. Now, being of a military background, you know, I don't, I, I don't foresee someone threatening my life um, acting in a cowardly manner. I see him as a determined uh, threat to my life. Uh, but then again, I don't encounter criminals on a daily basis like a law enforcement officer does. You know, when you start saying mostly and likely, there's an air of complacency. That's embedded in those words and uh, and I pray that I don't become complacent stay vigilant
but I could see how that could happen in a law enforcement capacity. I'm ranting again, aren't I? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Shut up, hippie. I'll talk all I want to. <laughs> my daggum show. So, maybe I answered it, maybe I didn't. I mean, my philosophy is take care of the most lethal threat to you uh, immediately, whatever it takes. And then if you get, hope you got your running shoes on if you're out of bullets. So, is that three? That's three. Well, those were good questions today. I think good. Yeah. You're starting to be able to pick them out right. <laughs> Goodness gracious. That one the other day just... Doofer. Doofer. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I want you to know we've laughed at your expense for quite some time. It's been funny. Yeah, thanks, Doofer. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Okay. Well, uh, do you know some, some dudes got a little butt hurt on my opinion of the high point thing the other day? Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, they got a little butt hurt. Because you can't say you don't, like, you don't recommend, you don't like <clears throat> a gun. Because that's like saying, I don't like your wife because she's fat and ugly. They take it personal. When it's just my opinion that some dude asked, but then they get all butt hurt about it. It's awesome. It's like I talk to them personally. Yeah. <laughs> and that's how the internet is, man. <laughs> that's how it is. So I get it. You know. But you know, for, for uh, every hot girl out there, there's at least one guy that can't deal with her. That's right. That's right. There's always some guy out there that's sick of her crap. I don't care how good looking she is. Same way about rifles. Yep. Yep. That's it. All right, guys. Well, I appreciate y'all tuning in. Uh, Sheepdogs, we'll see you guys on the inside. Sheepdogsociety.org if you want to join. Uh, you know, get all our content and more of these questions, too. Uh, pretty cool. Uh, appreciate it. And uh, check us out on those social media sites and continue sending us your questions. And those are actually really good questions, by the way. Uh, don't send us a doofer. That's what we're going to call it from now. <laughs> don't send us a doofer. We're going to get so many doofers. I know. It's going to come. Because I said, don't do it. Yeah. yeah. It's like kids. Don't run in the house. And then they all run. Yeah. I get it. Well, maybe we can do a here's your sign thing next time. Yeah. Yeah. Here's your doofer. Yeah. Here's your doofer. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, appreciate it. As always, stay alert and brag soften.